All right. <clears throat> I'm here. Fill me in. <sighs> we will. Hold on. Um, now look over at Bill. I think we need to go somewhere else. Yeah. Bill, thank you so much for your help, but, um, we'll be, we'll be out of your hair here, uh, just a couple minutes. Um, listen, if there's ever, and I, re I lean in, you ever need anything from me, I'm just call away. I'm sorry to barge in like this. You don't have to apologize, and anything you need, I meant it when I said that. And right. if you change your mind and you need something else back here, you just let me know. I'm okay. gonna burn this, okay? And he's pointing okay. to, like, the, some of the files or discs yep. that you have used. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, thanks, Bill. And I assume you were never here? <sighs> we were never here. Got it. Good luck. Thanks. Oh, you, uh, coffee. Much more than a coffee, actually. Several years worth of coffee. All right. Just don't die, okay? Okay. And I stand up, and, um, I guess we all kind of mosey on out yeah um is so Sawyer's still sort of like connected to us yeah still talking through mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. so to remind you you had kind of like this little technological bubble around you with the KIA so for for Selma to speak to Bill she probably stepped out because Bill can't hear anything that's going on inside that bubble uh, including your conversation with Sawyer but it's still I mean he was polite enough to sit with his back to you so that it's not like he was attempting to read lips or anything like that, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know much more than that. I don't know. Okay. Um, I think that as we are sort of standing there, just so you can't think of anything, uh, Galen, that would help us right now. I think it's important for us to hear what Sawyer has to say. If you're thinking about some kind of a safe location. <sighs> Everybody's kind of burned me at this point. I don't think we've got any solid places to make this happen. Especially if we're not doing it in HQ. Alright, um... Sawyer, it's kind of... I'm sorry, but, um, I'm gonna have to leave it up to you. We need a place to talk. Okay, I can... I have a place that can work. It's been my safe house and workshop for a while now. I'm risking a lot by giving its location to you for I hope you understand that. Yeah, of course. I was hoping there were some things you could get for me to help things along on my end. Uh, what kind of things you need? Well, first of all, a gun. Okay, I hear you. Um, what else? Some money, nothing crazy, but if I have to go to ground, after we do what we're about to do, if I think we're about to do what I think we're about to do, I'm certainly going to need some funds to lie low, and if I need any more equipment, well, I need to get it from somewhere, and it doesn't come free. I look at the, at the group, and I kind of shrug, and... Yeah. Like, that's reasonable to me, especially since we're using something that is being safeguarded and um where are we gonna get it <sighs> yeah. I don't know I'll make it happen I, I trust you'll get it to me when I need it just sometime over the next day or so I'll make it happen <clears throat> Does, the other uh... thing which you're not gonna like is I could really use some explosives Doesn't have to be high ordinance. I could get by with a half dozen flashbangs if you can swing it. I'm afraid to ask why. 
but that's... This place has been good to me. It's been safe for me. I need some measures to keep it safe if I'm going to open it up to other guests. Alternatively, you could bring some other equipment you think might help me, but I don't really have any ideas. I was really counting on the explosives. Why do you need them? <clears throat> Make sure anyone that comes knocking trying to rip data from my drives ends up regretting it. And smoke screening my hopefully immediate escape. How uh, see what I can do. I can't make any promises. All right. I that appreciate gun you you're need. probably the only person that can. Yeah. Does it have to be clean or can it be just any gun? Anything better than a subcompact, I'll take. Okay. But this conversation seems very urgent, so I'll understand if you don't have it with you when you come and visit. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go in the car. You can uh, give us whatever directions you need to give us to find this place, and um, we'll figure it out along the way, okay? I'm sure we can figure right. out some stuff to get you to make you comfortable. Appreciate that. Yeah. I'm going to give you coordinates for a safe location to park your spinner. It's going to be a couple of blocks away from the location. <coughs> the rest of the directions, they're going to be precise, but they're precise for a purpose, I promise. Okay. All right. You're going to want to head to sector four. Four. All right. Um, that's dangerously close to it's fine it's fine um yeah um I guess we'll see you in a bit all right well I'll uh see you when I see you <clears> okay <throat> thanks Sawyer and uh, um I think at this point I start to go towards the door to leave um, what, what is Bill doing at this point? I mean, I know we were all sort of huddled up, but is he still back to us? Uh, I think he began, uh, prepping for burn, uh, to make sure that there was no evidence that you guys were ever here, uh, that whatever that you were accessing, uh, is, is gone, is clean, essentially. He's getting rid of, uh, like he's ripping probably one of his machines apart, uh, to take bits out of it. Like, he's gonna have to buy new parts, uh, to make sure that it's untraceable, where there's no evidence left behind that you're here. So, by by all appearances, it looks like he's, uh, got your back right now. Okay. I definitely give a sort of, uh, an untrusting, uh, look in that direction, but I'm not trying to be a dick or anything. I'm just eyes are open um you can uh roll observation or intuition or something like that if you want to kind of get a vibe mm. of bill and like what he's doing right now yeah i'll give it a shot uh you can do he's, either like an whoop. empathy roll or just your eyeballs Ooh, I, what do we I get did straight observation straight observation too. eyeballs okay um oh boy <laughs> okay so well you mm. are um you know, you're a seasoned police officer, uh, so I okay. will tell you that uh, he's moving lightning fast. He's done this many, many times before. It's He's not nervous. It's almost habitual. And I think, you know, I don't... Do you know what Bill does? Has Selma told you what he does for a living? No, I don't think so. Okay, then um, I think it's very clear he works to you. He probably works in some sort of cybersecurity or something along those lines, but this is, he probably did, wasn't always a white hat, right? Like this is mm. somebody who has clearly had a lot of experience in getting rid of um, evidence and stuff he's, like that. He's gotten his hands dirty yeah. a lot. Yeah. 
So you can absolutely kind of, that becomes very clear to you that mm, this guy knows what the fuck he's doing. Um, so he's cleaning up after us. He's cleaning up of. after you, yeah. He's making okay. sure that there's no evidence that you guys were here or that you broke into Tyrell. He's. <laughs> it looks like he's got your back right now and he's doing it, yeah, he's doing it really quickly and there's no there's no panic on his face at all. He's just like, okay, this is what's got to be done. Um, I think it's, and I, I mean, you're just using your eyes. You, you didn't roll yeah. empathy, but it's still a critical success. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of, um, a little bit of extra there where I think it's, I think maybe you have a moment where it's like, oh, Bill would die for Selma. Like he's just, he's doing whatever he's on, he's on point for her. He's on her side. Okay. Um, yeah. So then my face would quickly change to a little bit of appreciation. Uh, I'll nod in his direction. Very, just one slow sort of, um, are we ready to go? We're going to, uh, so much. Uh, do I know Bill from our partner days? Oh yeah. Yeah. I would have, I would have told you about Bill. Okay. You, I think we probably would have even worked with Bill before. Yeah. At some point, um, yeah. I, I I don't think you're super familiar with him, but we would have we would have exchanged words. Maybe. Uh, then uh, before I before I leave, I I would walk up to Bill, hold out my hand. He reaches out to shake your hand. Thanks again, firmly. Bill. Yeah. Um, listen, I don't mean to be paranoid, but is there any chance you don't want to be tracked on those? And he points to your KIA on the table. What do you have in mind? Well, I'm assuming if you came here that you couldn't go to the LAPD for whatever reason. And if that's the case, you might want to... You might want to give me a second to remove the fact that you were here on those. You got GPS, Yeah, whatever right? covers your ass, Bill. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's not just my ass that needs covering. I mean, it's, it's covered. Fair enough. But do you need your ass covered? How long is it going to take? Five, ten minutes. Do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so then... Everybody KIA is on the table. Yep. Yeah, all right. I throw mine down. All right, Bill. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Hold on, I just got to roll for him. Bill, Bill, what are you doing, Bill? <laughs> yeah, we gotta push. You can't just pour water on it. That's not gonna. That's just gonna break it, Bill. What oh, are you doing? Oh, we can't do that. Hold on. No successes, by the way, for anyone <laughs> yeah, listening. For oh, listening. you can't see oh, it yeah, on the screen Hold on, either. hold on. I got it. I got it. I got it. There you go. Um, I'm gonna have to push the shit out of this, dude. Come on, Bill. Oh God. Bill. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. You can keep pushing as long as there's not double ones. Yeah, I just... And he would, I guess, for her. Is he um, sweating? Yeah. Yeah, he no. would. Oh, no. There we go. Uh, all right. Second push, got it. <laughs> That's... Ay, Dios mio. So, but, right. but well, I, my hesitation was not in, like, how to describe his failure. It was, do I take this chaotic role of a failure to mean that he does something else to your KIA? Like, oh, yeah. you know, like, what, what is it? Does he leave some sort of trace behind that it's been tampered with or something like that? Because I, I think he is skilled enough to succeed, but I, I wonder if maybe there's some alert going off in the LAPD that a KIA is being tampered with or something like that. Um, but he did he did end up succeeding in the end with a push roll. So I think, I think you... He's hunched over. He's very focused on his work. He pulls out his glasses probably for the first time and he's fiddling with this. And I think it's very clear that um, there is a technical hardware piece to what he's trying to do as well as the um, software or technological side through, through a computer. So he's able to hook up his PC to your KIA and he does some stuff, but there's also something that he needs to do with your hardware. And that's maybe where he's not as strong um, or he's rusty because he doesn't really deal with hardware as much as someone like, say, Sawyer. Um, and so he swears and shit. And then, you know, he's fiddling with it. And if you even try to say anything while he's working, he just ignores you and continues. And then eventually he's like, okay, I got it. 
And he leans back and takes in a deep breath. Uh, and he goes, yeah, I, I got it. You're good. I thought for a second we might be in trouble, but we're not. You were oh, never you here. Yeah, you were at uh, you were at Lil's <clears throat> Diner for an hour. All right. Thank you. So you want to head there first before wherever you go next so that you leave from the right point. You got about 20 minutes. Let's get going then. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Stay safe. Okay, you take it easy. Um, We're gonna possibly need to head to the LAPD if we need explosives. I can requisition some. So Listen, about the explosives. Are you out the door? Just to be clear, are you guys like walking? Yeah. Or, okay. All right. Out the door and sure. walking. Yeah. yeah. All right. I thought maybe like the the KIA bubble had gone down, and now you guys were like the explosives, and Bill's just so like, oh okay. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah. No. All right. Okay. No. 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 Uh, I, 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 it shocked me, but I don't think. I don't think Sawyer is going to use it for any nefarious purposes. I think it's more of a defensive plan. It's just a matter of how I'm going to convince Holden or Dispatch oh, God. that we need we actually, these explosives. We might want to make it a little easier. Now, Sawyer said or something. What if we get some, um, we got a few of those smoke grenades. So it sounds like they need a diversion to get away. Mm. That's a little less destructive. Sure. Um, but something that can cause uh, to obscure, I suppose. It's I can get idea. some flashbangs. Well, if it were me, what I'd be doing in his situation is scrubbing my location, meaning taking all of the hard drives and info and blowing them up, burning them, whatever. I think that's got to be part of it, what he wants them for. Maybe. All Flash I know is. Can do that. Yes, I can. Uh, Sawyer's a very direct person. I don't think he'd be asking for explosives, you know, if he meant flashbangs. I think, I think he he said flashbangs if we could. Oh, I see flashbangs. Well, and I'm misremembering. My point here, Selma, is we got two options. I can ask my rather shady contacts for explosives, or I can ask the LAPD. Mm. Got enough clout that we can ask for some stuff. I just don't know how to make it pertain to the case right now. And do we want that trail? Well, we can figure this out. He doesn't need him right away, he said, so we can figure this out a little later. Well, whatever he needs, I trust that it's for a good reason. I don't think it's for... Uh, I, I think it's think well it's thought nefarious. out, whatever it is. It is It is. It is a plan that seems to be in motion here, and I'm, oh, I'm just trying All to right, do my I damn best. They want protection, I get it. Yeah, they want... We got you know, uh, two vehicles here, right? Because I came yeah. solo. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the question is, who? where's the other vehicle come from, actually? Um, because you... Um, unless we'd like to say that you have now requisitioned a new vehicle because it has been long enough that you guys can have a new vehicle after the one that uh, blew up oh yeah um that's a good question actually Mm -hmm. uh I mean you guys went to the LAPD and then went to Bill's house so I mean you could have also taken a cab but I feel like that's very dangerous considering what you were carrying and what you were doing yeah I doubt we'd use any sort of public transport Um, I don't think so either but does that mean that Skiff would have come in uh because it's it's the difference with Skiff. You were at the uh, hospital. I'm in, I'm in my own yeah, vehicle. Yeah, Skiff was in his okay. vehicle. But I think it's safe so. to say that you guys, it's been long enough that they could have requisitioned you a new Blade Runner vehicle. Like plus, okay. you guys okay. like saved the town and shit like that. So I think I don't think they would let you not have a new vehicle. I'll pick so. up a squad. Yeah. So uh, it's either Bob or Galen that has pulled out yeah. a new vehicle. So, okay. How okay. much does that cost? For the um, four, I believe. It's four promotion points, yeah. I'll pick it up. Okay. 
Okay. You sure? Oh yeah, I I was maxed out on promotion points. I wasn't. Well then, you're grabbing it. Yeah. Um. So I guess we should head to the diner first. Um. Skiff, you wanna you wanna meet us? Um. You wanna take your vehicle, or how do you wanna do this? Yeah. Right. I'll uh take my vehicle. I'll stash it at the at the diner, and then I'll uh join you guys in this ride. All right. Okay. Before we go, though, uh, Bob, yeah, is that V that you put on the message? Is that what I think it is? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll go. I'll meet we'll you guys at the it. diner. Yeah. <clears throat> and I hop in my spinner, and I guess uh, nah. I was thinking about peeling out or making a, but I I won't do that to Bill. <laughs> <laughs> What it, whatever the sound of tire screeching. Yeah, whatever the equivalent is. I, <laughs> uh, uh, I won't. I won't do it. But I thought about it. <laughs> Revving the whatever thrusters are <laughs> as you go past this window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um. Okay. So I need. We can go ahead and say you guys stop at the diner and then get in the car and and head to where you're meeting. Uh. But the but the question I have is unfortunately very important. Um, I need you to roll, somebody needs to roll stealth for each vehicle. So Skiff, obviously you're rolling for your vehicle, but then somebody else needs to roll stealth for the other vehicle. Just because Bob or Bill most certainly has neighbors and two cop cars came up to his apartment. So we want to see if he's going to get seen or that's going to get noticed or if that's going to have any sort of effect on on him. So I'm going to have you guys roll. Stealth seems like the most, uh, the easiest Well, there is a... Uh, a maneuverability score underneath the vehicle if if that's what you want to use or not uh maneuverability i would say you could roll that to see if you get to the diner in time but i'm just going to say that you guys do because it's very difficult to roll in this system but what i'm trying to determine is if a neighbor that works for the company bill works for sees the cop cars come up and then reports bill for okay. having talked to the cops so, so this role has nothing to do with driving nope. skill. It's just okay, okay. to see if you guys, if 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 something gets noticed, that's all. Sure. So stealth, stealth is, seems stealth the most applicable. Then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll abstain. I'm from terrible. The stealth roll. <laughs> all right, I can do it. Thanks. <clears throat> all right, so we've got one. One success. One success, and then the other one was a fail. Are you going to be pushing skiff or no? There's no pressure to do that. Uh, this is just a generic roll to see if. Um, no. Okay. I, I, yep. I, I'm low on resolve. I so. completely understand. Okay. I'll Perfect. save it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, okay. So you guys go to the diner and then drop one of the cars off there. You make it well within the time frame that Bill set up for you. And then you're leaving in one vehicle. Um, where are you going uh, after that? Are you going straight to meet Sawyer? Yeah. Well, I think... We'll have that conversation because okay. um sounds good so it looks like we gotta go towards uh, koreatown from here um uh sawyer's giving us some pretty specific directions on what to do where to park okay. and whatnot i'm not sure the kind of heat that they're expecting once we arrive or once we do whatever we're gonna do so they you just mean Sawyer right yeah Sawyer okay oh just Sawyer yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if what I want what I don't want to do is put Sawyer in a situation where we're trying to get to the bottom of this and they're left vulnerable and I don't know what our time frame is on that between now getting there talking to them potentially getting into some stuff that's questionable and potentially having them found out in a place that they currently feel safe, but may be exposed. That's why, I'm guessing that's why I gave us meticulous instructions. Right. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Maybe we'll have a conversation about where we can deliver this stuff to, because once we go there and do this, we might not want to return. Oh, definitely not, yeah. Yeah. No. All right. Like I said, one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. All right, I, I immediately instinctually hop into the driver's seat. Shotgun. All right. Fired up and away we go. 
Yeah. All right. Would you like to describe, Sawyer, what they uh, encounter when they get to where they're supposed to be meeting you? Or do you want to send them through a couple bells and whistles? There's a couple of bells and whistles, but not too many. Basically, the instructions are fairly clear, and anyone that's paying attention can see that it's... They're designed to avoid, you know, any surveillance in the area. You know, you're kind of walking through blind spots. You're... You're not taking any particularly bizarre shortcuts. It's just a couple of very specific left turn, right turn on foot. When you actually get there, the access is into a worn down service elevator. And uh, you are instructed to push the uh, button second from the top. Um, I imagine at this point, then, we're probably in the service elevator and hitting that button. <sighs> um, yeah, the like building you know. itself is uh, a, what looks like a, a gutted, aged, dilapidated broadcasting tower for uh, an old radio station. Hmm. What does it smell like in here? Smells like dust. There's probably a hint of ozone nice. in the mm. air. Mm, okay. But definitely seems like uh, definitely seems like there's been at least a little bit of foot traffic in an otherwise completely abandoned area. Okay. Can I roll observation or or some you way to may. maybe look around just to see, you know, about that that foot traffic? Um, if I can tell if it is maybe just one, one person, or if it's multiple. Yep, you absolutely may. Um, okay, I'm gonna roll it normal here. Observation. That's a three. Wow, okay. I will let Sawyer answer. It's definitely just one person to Sawyer, uh, to, uh, Selma's keen observation skills. Okay. Right, so just and, one person. Uh, Does anybody else want to roll anything else before I describe the apartment a little bit more or this uh, space a little bit more? Uh, yeah, I'm going mm-hmm. to look for uh, potential uh, quick exits uh, that may oh. be noticeable. Good. Um, okay. Either what we saw on the way in from the outside or uh, what I'm seeing, you know, stairwells, um, I don't know. So, some of these old buildings, they have walls that you can actually get behind, um, depending on just the age and the build and the make. So, yeah, I'd like to roll for that. Okay. Go for it. Uh, observation yep. again? Mm-hmm. A one. Uh, Sawyer, do you want to cover how many exits there are? There's not a whole lot. Yeah. But the implication in my mind is that where he's set up at the moment, where I'm set up at the moment, is kind of its own contained space a few floors up, basically. So the only street access is probably a a fire escape that looks very worse for wear at this stage. Like, it's already kind of been through hell. Okay, thanks. I would like to search for something. Yep, go for it. I want to search for any indications that Sawyer might be a replicant. How would you like to do that? With your eyeballs or empathy or what? Also, that music change. Oh, dude, I fucking knew it, man. It's in my bones. I knew it. What the fuck? (laughs) Sorry. Uh, well, I think this will probably be insight. Okay. Okay. And go ahead and roll at disadvantage, please. I don't think you know Sawyer well enough to know uh, his normal no. behavior, so. I'm looking for the obvious stuff. Yeah. I'm looking for strange, out of place, personal items, and I'm looking for repetitive things that somebody wouldn't normally 
affectations that somebody wouldn't normally have. Can I ask what out-of-place personal items mean to you? I've slept in a lot of different apartments. What you normally see might be people's family. You might see accomplishments or trophies or nothing, depending on the personality. Have if you... it is a... Sorry, go ahead. If it were, say, a wallflower, a wallflower would have very little in terms of social interaction. Indications of social interaction, rather. If it were a family person, they'd have lots of pictures. If it's a replicant, I think that a replicant might focus on something peculiar that the rest of us might not notice at first. Okay. But after multiple glances or multiple questions, we might. Have you slept with pleasure models before? Have you slept with a replicant before that you knew was a replicant when it was happening? Yes. Okay. Take away your disadvantage. That's a zero. Would you I'm like going to push? To leave it. Okay, you're gonna leave it. Okay. Um, in that case, I will go ahead and describe a little bit of this apartment. Are they up in the? Oh, well, not the apartment, but the space now, Sawyer. There's a moment where you're regarded okay, by. Yeah by a uh, security camera that is set up in the elevator. And I think that Selma would probably notice this, is that that's that's new. That's the newest thing that you've seen so far, is a camera that's definitely been ripped from somewhere else and has been installed into this elevator. And okay. it's, fairly, uh, it's fairly unobtrusive, but you clock it right away. And it has Sawyer written all over it in terms mm -hmm. of its its placement, its, its design. And uh, um, and I can describe the apartment itself, yeah, go uh, for or it. the uh, the workspace. So it's um, it used to be the main work studio of uh, a radio broadcast center. So a radio station. Uh, so there's a lot of space because a lot of the machinery, a lot of the equipment has been gutted and removed, and some of it scavenged over the years. But there are a number of recently disturbed power cables running through that are providing some lifeblood back into the place. When you step further into the room, you see evidence that there is one person living here. You see a small living space set up inside the remnants of a recording booth. Looks like just one mattress, makeshift bed otherwise, you know, supported on, you know, a pallet or crates or just anything that helps elevate it off the floor away from bugs and rodents. Uh, you see you know, a few makeshift lights, you see a makeshift heater, you see a couple of different things scattered around what looks like the skeleton of a kitchen, which is mostly just a coffee pot and a few other things. Not a lot of food, not a lot of drink immediately available. Then there's a wall that has two cork boards up upon it, and one is covered in photographs of various small birds, mockingbirds, nightingales, thrushes. There doesn't appear to be any rhyme or reason to how that they're put there. There's one photo against said corkboard, which is of three people, and one looks like a, a slightly younger Sawyer, like not by much, maybe like by two years or so, mm. with, a, with, with, two, with a, a man and a woman. That, um, and he resembles the man in the photo very much. There's another corkboard, which looks like an absolute scroll of madness. There's various colored threads, there's photographs, there's names, Terrell, Nakayama, all the names that you're familiar with plastered on this corkboard, connected by threads that, again, you don't have the, the insight or the awareness as to what they all individually mean, but it all, does all seem to be connected. But other than a few light fixtures that have been repaired, all the light is coming from a series of 
pieces of tech, computers, monitors, all set up in a workspace where it's designed so that no matter what he's doing, he's always facing the elevator, the only entrance into this space at the moment, because you would notice that the, uh, the stairs, the fire escape, that's all blocked off by debris, whether placed there intentionally or otherwise. But you would see me standing there. I am exhausted, and I sound a lot less... I seem a lot less put together than I might have seemed verbally. But when you actually can lay eyes on me, you can see that I am... It looks like I haven't slept in days. And uh, I, I just kind of acknowledge you with a small raise of my hand and beckon you further into the space. My shoulders just kind of drop and I look at Sawyer <clears throat> and um, I suddenly am overwhelmed with emotion because I realize I haven't haven't seen him for a while and um, you know, I don't want to like approach too closely but uh, I just look at him and Hey, how you doing? I'm alive. Looks like you all made it in one piece, which is, that's good. Um, yeah. I'm glad to see you. Uh, welcome to my humble abode. It's uh, not much, but it's been getting me by the last few, the last while. Yeah, yeah. You made it homey though, you know? <laughs> I mean. I like it. <laughs> You as know, much some as throw I could. pillows. It could definitely use a more delicate touch, but for the time being, I'm I'm trying to live as light as possible. I'm sure you can understand why. Sure, sure, yeah. Well, um, I guess uh, I'll just have a seat over here. Um, where, in your opinion, is the most uh, like comfortable spot to to sit? I glance around, and I have exactly. <laughs> I have exactly two chairs in the whole place. And I go, uh, just pick a chair. It's pro you can have. Okay. Mine's pretty good. Right. It's got good okay. back support. I actually lifted right. it from All right. the precinct. You know what? So it's I'm, I'm going to let Bob, Bob, why don't you have a seat here? And you, you, you sit. I'll sit on the floor. No. If that's okay. Oh. I mean, yeah. there's, I can get some boxes or some crates out. I mean, I don't have, no, I can go. No, no, no. I've got two just... cups. So if, if two of you want to, uh, I mean, it's difficult We're getting clean water up here. any but I... sort of, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Sorry. We didn't but... expect any amenities here. Okay. That's, that's good. Cause I definitely don't have any. Um, okay. I'm not used to company. I haven't spoken to a person face to face in a while. So. Well, thanks for making the, the time and thanks for having us here. And we'll see what we can do about the stuff that you need. All right. I appreciate that because uh, it's only ever a matter of time with people like this. Right. Yeah. So. Well, speaking of which, um, if you can. Skiff here doesn't know as much as what you've already given us. So if we can just sort of go through everything as much as we can um make sure we're all on the same page yeah of course uh and i sort of wince a little bit as i put my fingers to my ear like i'm hearing a high-pitched sound that no one else can hear just for a moment and go um you sure i can't get any of you anything i mean the coffee's not good but it's it's uh, potable i think yeah, no, definitely no, not. No, I'm, I'm all right. Thank you. Um, hi, Skiff. I looked into Vanya for you, and uh, I thought you should be here when I laid that all out. So it's good that you are here. I uh, Do you want me to just start from the top? Is that the best place to go? If you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Um, feel free to interrupt me with questions along the way. And I, uh, I turn a screen around to face you all. 
I think just in the background, just to sort of fill in like our roles and stuff, Bob and I are kind of doing like that, just like looking around a little bit around the place. Yeah, like, so. mm. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. If you do, you have windows in here that are, um, and I'm just assuming here that are either <laughs> boarded up or or closed over with newspaper or something. Uh, do you have a view out? Everything is closed up with some kind of tarp something you know as if as if uh, construction was being done in the place to like protect the glass sure um, yeah and that all that all looks relatively untouched and there's one window very close to Sawyer's workstation where it seems like I have personally you know papered that up a little bit uh, uh then um I think along with what Galen's doing I am looking for any views outside <sighs> it's one angle and it's not going to be much but I am looking for something Oh wow! I got something. If you're, uh, if you want to keep your eyes on something, and I turn a second screen around, and it has what looks like a little, uh, a little suite of various camera angles and a couple of other readouts from not visual data, but other information like loud sounds in the area and things like that. It just looks okay. like a, a really, a really slapped, cobbled together like a s- surveillance system for just the building and its surroundings. Um. Okay. So I think uh, once. That's turned around. I and if you show me, like, I don't know if you get a keypad or something to to. Do, do you? Is there any interactivity um, with this? Like, can I make things bigger? Can I focus on something? Can I just? Yeah, just yeah. I like um, a security station. I fit it for a bit, and I set your KIA up with it, and I I, I let you. Oh, I let you. Right. Uh, I let you interact with it without much much fuss. Thank you. Um, and then yeah, I'll I'll. Be doing what uh, what Galen was saying. Uh, similarly, walking around and um, occasionally going through the information on the KIA. Okay. So, um, the screen that I face around with the it just has just a, a scroll of constantly scrolling information. There's photographs. There's diagrams. Nakayama's face comes up a couple of times, but the the header of the report, so to speak, is Vanya, and uh, server V8212 comes up a couple times as well throughout. So, I think you remember what I told you last time, and I look at Skiff directly and say, uh, Vanya's an acronym. I don't think you knew that. Viable Augmented Nexus Young Adult. This is a program that Tyrell had in beta for quite some time, with research dating all the way back to 50 years ago. The project was about developing replicants, of course, but this actually predates the first ever Nexus model. This Vanya project was, I I guess, the birth and ground for all the rest of Tyrell's technologies. Vanya was the prototype, Nexus is what we got. The original Vanya model was like a designer child intended to grow with the client. Thing is, Tyrell Company, they never really cracked the code in having an autonomous replicant that could go through a simulated adolescence. So this program had a couple of hitches, and the main one was that they had to swap out the the chassis, the, the body of the replicant every few years. Which means that little Vanya has to graduate from body to body as she ages up. Which is quite a subscription service for the wealthy. And obviously okay. this thing never w- went to market. One, one moment. Of course. So the... <clears throat> if I have this correctly, the brain... ages, so to speak, but the body doesn't. Is that correct? The brain develops, or... Yes. Whatever you want to call the the nervous center, the the mind of this this uh, thing develops like a human child would. Develops just like a human mind would. It's it's it is capable of learning and development at a way that we didn't really see until more advanced models came out along the line. But that was the the genesis of the whole thing was this design. So you're saying. Possibly that the thoughts 
memories, experiences of a replicant can be transferred into a new body, a new shell. Well, that's the problem that they actually hit. They did a series of testing. This thing never went to market, obviously, or we'd be hearing all about it. Right. But the seamless transference of consciousness is quite a metaphysical puzzle to unscramble. Because if a replicant can age and develop mentally like a human child, but can't physically age, you have to figure out how to maintain an unbroken thread of consciousness between each body, which is a difficult proposition. And Tyrell has been looking to solve that particular riddle for quite a while now. He's making a mind, a learning mind. Yeah. And I look uh, at my, I look at my, my crew, my uh, partners. If they, I'm not, I'm not unincluding you, um, uh, Sawyer. But if they crack this problem, they solve this problem, you know what that means? That means we have replicants with no lifespan, just need a new shell, just like a goddamn butterfly changing into a new body every so often. And that means immortality. Yeah. Well, that's the challenge they faced anyway, because transferring the mind of one model to the next is, uh, I don't know, how do you turn essence or the self-awareness of a person back in a information that could be transferred seamlessly. So every model, every every chassis, every upgraded Vanya in its first phase had to be reset back to zero each time that she jumped up an age bracket. So it sounded pretty impossible at the start. A replica is not a machine. It's just a matter of, it's not just firmware and hardware. You're trying to jumpstart the human experience, thoughts and feelings. I mean, the way that someone does documentation talks, it's almost like they consider that to be the soul. That's what they were dabbling in. And the full list of their experiments, frankly, it borders on the insane. And I, I start scrolling through well, we know that flashes of we, information. We know already that they can put memories into them. Sure. But Why can this is where they de- this is where they develop the technology is what I'm saying. This is actually where it started. But who's to say you can't put real memories in them? I that's believe the, that that's I, I think they can. So they experimented with a lot of different things, direct data transfers, neural networks, quantum entanglement. It's a lot. And I felt lucky that I understood half of it. And I'm just trying to source some additional research so I can understand the rest. But the solution that they hit upon is one that we're already very familiar with, which is the implantation of memories. Because if you, if you can capture all the memories of a unit you can transfer it into a new machine, a new body, and you'd have a functional, seamless transition of consciousness. And according to some quantum theory, if the old unit dies at the exact moment that the new iteration picks up where it left off, that is not just transference of consciousness. That's a little more philosophical than that. That is the same person in some theories. Right, so they, okay. start, they well, start implanting memories. Go ahead. There's also the potential of them having an assembly line make the replicant put in the memories make the replicant I mean we saw how many different of the same person that we had to take out down the morgue in the building same person how many of them were sharing the same memories well I mean with this sort of technology you could take the finest assassin or the most skilled reflexive soldier and you could duplicate them and each and every single one of them would believe that they are the original they'd have no perception of of a, a gap in memory or their consciousness so they start implanting memories and they develop this with the Vanya program and that's the technology they took over to the the newer models the N8s 
But I think this is the part that's the most interest to Skiff, personally speaking, which is that they have an original test model still on file. They've managed to age this one all the way up to the age of 27. I've seen the files, and it's very interesting, but I don't know where Vanya is heading now, either the one that I believe we've physically seen, or think we may have seen, or the project itself, but memory implantation, we definitely know that's possible now, which means that Project Vanya is just a, a matter of legal issues to get jump-started again. So you're saying there's one still in the books, meaning there's possibly one still out there? Hmm. There's one original uh, test model that is still, according to this, which is admittedly an older archive, still operational in some capacity. I look directly at Selma. I think we may have seen her. Yeah. That's yeah. the one you named, right? In the the photo that I took? Yeah. The one with the, the scarf. Yeah. Does the and, uh, age of the one that you've discovered, does that match up at all, Skiff? The one you knew? When you were young. I mean, if she aged like a human does, then she'd be a lot older, but I mean, she'd be my age. Right, but they figured out how to do that after the fact. Right. Well, if the body doesn't age, I'm guessing she stays the same age physically looking for a few years. They trade her up to a new body, stays the same age for a few years, so on and so forth. Uh, so I don't think it'd be a one-to-one -one if they have actual passage of time. It's definitely not a thing they have to worry about, so. I'm just wondering if, if it's something... I mean, if they were creating children with memory sets that couldn't age properly, do they retire them? Have they been retired? <laughs> Is that a process that they've gone through? And if they've been able to allow one to grow in whatever fucked up way that they may have figured out then what's the likelihood that the one that Skiff saw is the same one that they knew I'm just wondering I'm gonna pitch something to you which is that the woman that we saw that Skiff believes is Vanya was one of the three people directly involved in the kidnapping of Kano Nakayama, who was one of the leads on Project Vanya. Say that again. Kano Nakayama, the designer at Tyrell that was abducted, was abducted by a group of replicants. Right. One of which was the blonde woman that you identified as Vanya. Right. He, in his history, was also a lead developer on Project Vanya. Right. A lot of this research that we're looking at, this paperwork that I'm scrolling you through, this is his handwriting. I mean, right. his keystrokes, you know what I mean? That doesn't make... Why would they be running around with Nakayama? <sighs> well, are they the ones that picked him up? What? The, why? Why would they have any association? Want or want to have any association? Unless if there he were has, multiple of them. If he has the knowledge and the of the workings of them inside and out, and they have some sort of plan or idea, and they might need them. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Is that they need something from him? I don't know how. It's possible that the the prototype went rogue but she wants to continue living and he's the only one that can help her it's I mean, that's... possible I mean she's the only living case study of what happens to one of these machines if they go unchecked for a while so there could be any number of motivations but I think the simplest one is that I think 
I think if I was, if I'd been built, if I'd been designed, I'd certainly want to meet my creator at some stage. So I don't find that too difficult a notion to swallow. Yeah, but if she was still part of <clears throat> Tyrell, she'd have I don't no think problem. she is. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. But she's rebelling or whatever against Tyrell. This is what and I in was order discussing. to get in touch with Nakayama, she would have to kidnap him. This is what I was discussing when we spoke previously, just earlier on, which was uh, that it was def Tyrell definitely had nothing to do with the abduction of Nakayama in my mind, but. I think Tyrell had a lot to do with the explosion or the attempted bombing of the LAPD. There's at least two groups moving against us and each other at the same time right now. So it's, wait, wait, it's, wait, wait, it's, wait, 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 wait. You're saying potentially that there's a group that Tyrell is using, replicants, for their own ends, and then there's a completely different group that is rogue or at least separate from that for their own ends. I, if Tyrell wanted to abduct their own chief designer, I don't understand why. I can't imagine what they would gain from having him captive. You know, if they wanted to disappear him, they could have done it any number of ways. The surveillance that I saw taking place and the eventual abduction, they very much wanted him alive in my estimation. I could be wrong. It could be set up to look like an external abduction, but it doesn't make any sense to me personally. Just so I'm sure, the 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 dead bodies at the kidnapping site of Nat, those were Tyrell, the the people who were dead. That is correct. Yeah. And I look at Bob and I go, "If this is true, I bet your." Uh, Sam, replicant yeah. version of your ex-partner as part of that that splinter cell yeah I mean that would make sense considering what we saw what we came upon and it does make sense it does make sense I just I didn't I don't know I why you even taken the memories from your I'm going to put it this way, with seamless transfer of consciousness and the ability to take memories from living people and implant them seamlessly without the unit having any awareness of it taking place means, as far as I'm concerned, anybody could be black bagged off the street with enough ample warning and seamlessly replaced with a duplicate. One that does not know it is a duplicate. That's the full extent of the technology we're talking about. Immortality is one thing, but disappearing your enemies and making them your allies without them knowing it is another. Unless you do find out that you're a duplicate. And that's what I'm wondering if that's what happened with Sam. Because Sam recognized who you were. But that wasn't Sam. <sighs> no, I, what I if? don't think so. I don't know. What if? What if this was, this was just simply a, 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 a d duplicate? that found out that these memories were not his. I don't know how I'd reckon with that, but it is a machine, so. I mean, yeah, the Sam that we met had a level of um, confidence to himself. He seemed capable, uh, intelligent, and very aware. Um, I'm not saying that my Sam wasn't like that, but I, there was a distinct difference in feeling, um, between the two, in a way. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know, and without asking them point blank about their memories, I, I wouldn't even know how to ascertain that, uh. How far did we get on the, uh, server hack? The Tyrell intrusion? Yeah. We opted not to intrude into Tyrell systems. We can do it from here, because that's what I've been doing all week. Every day. But 
the process that I've been using to... I'm basically cracking in through a back door, taking what I need, and then creating my own transcript copies of this information without tampering with any of the original files because there's any number of security measures or trips or whatever might be there if I try and actually rip it direct. So it's a very slow process and I'm not even through it all yet, but I think I have most of the Project Vanya stuff locked down at least. If you wanted to take a hard copy with you, which uh, I can provide you. Is this information uh, off of server VA212? Yes. Amongst other things, but I haven't had time to parse everything that I pulled from Nakayama's apartment. Is there something else to be gained from that server? Because Natalie seemed to think that it was the key to everything. Well, I've been scouring that server a great deal. Uh, there may be something that I've missed, but I'm not, like I said, I'm not done. So I haven't fully explored every nook and cranny, but I think I have, you know, 95% of what we're looking for at the very least. Hmm. Are you, you want to go back in and make sure? Is that what this is? No. If you're sure, then that's fine with me. I'm. Um, I think what I'm most curious about is who all the players are here. Because we really don't know. Sure, we got Vanya and Nakayama and Sam potentially one way or the other. We've got Tyrell. We have the LAPD. But whose goal is what at this point? What are we missing? Who are we missing? Who's at the top? And why? Because I feel like we're missing something. And I'm not 100% sure where to look. I mean, I know where to look. I mean, Tyrell seems the right place. But well, speaking of missing, do you have any, uh, and I'm looking at the Sawyer, do you have any information or anything to go on about 600 plus disappeared Nexus 6 models? Are you talking about the information I pulled originally? Yeah. Sounds like um, an army to me. It's a fair few, and uh, it's possible these OWL models are examples of this. Uh, This memory duplication process, possibly. I'm not sure. We're not really going to know unless we catch one alive, I don't think. I just want to know if, if and where they're gathering. Well, I don't really have any avenues to investigate at the moment regarding that. Okay. I... If you want to... If you want to know what my priority list is, I can tell you. But if you have other things you want to put onto that pile, I'm very happy to look into it for you. I just need a place to start poking around. Electric I checked dreams. out Nakayama's apartment. You want me to check Electric Dreams? That's where we saw the original Vanya, and that's where she went around the corner and disappeared, and I haven't had the chance to go back there yet. There's a lot of weird stuff going on there. Yeah, there's that haiku that you found. I fire my brows, and I'm, I'm painfully adjusting my ear again. Are you okay? These things are fritzing, and I, I point to both of my ears, just sort of nonchalantly. And Selma would know that Sawyer's ears have been replaced by cochlear implants. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, geez, sorry. Sorry to hear that. I went through a, this security measure at Nakayama's apartment that scrambled everything, and it's just been, it's just ah. been strange ever since. Yeah. Uh, I haven't exactly been checking in with my service provider for firmware updates. Sure, sure. Well, just to catch you up on the Electric Dreams thing, they have a haiku, and it's a what I can only assume is a password. And I have the first line, but I need to finish the haiku 
and I don't have that part yet. The first haiku goes, endless paths entwine, the choices you define, what's this journey mine? Well, it's not a haiku, maybe it is, I don't know, I didn't count the syllables. What's but this journey mine? It's definitely poetry. The second yeah, yeah. answer starts with hidden face I wear. And that's part of what was, what uh, our, our gal at the LAPD was looking up. Part of it, I got her kidnapped and tortured. So I she wanna... must have been on something. She was on something. Enough for Tyrell to be nervous. She was on the server that I was on. I detected her intrusion. I was in there the same time she was in there. But was she detected through that? Or was there something I, else? If I can detect you and I'm a fellow intruder in the system, then the security measures sure can. I don't know exactly can, what can you, flagged her, but... Did you, you come up, did you come upon this? And you're searching of that... Did you come upon this haiku? Searching into the servers? Did you see it anywhere? A reference to it anywhere? Lines Came from it anywhere? Does that trip anything for me, memory-wise, and what I've been digging through? Uh, not pertaining to Vanya, at the very least. I, but again, you I have... You can roll if you want. Like, there's always a chance. Uh, but roll yeah, a disadvantage. Question. There's, I, I have three mm -hmm. drives, and I've only really mm -hmm. dug into one of them so far, which is the Vanya drive. Um, yeah, I'll roll observation. Uh, tech. Oh, tech. Yep. Sorry. Well, <laughs> that's okay. It's, it's okay. I'm pretty sure tech is reason. better, yeah. No, I should roll tech. Yep. You Your go. tech skill is better, I think, than observation. Uh, so that's a three for those listening. Um... Let me think on that and get back to you because I can give you some sort of reference to that, but I'd have to think about what it would be and where it would be located on that drive. So go ahead and continue the scene. I have a lot of information that I haven't dug through yet, so it's possible I can get back to you in a few days and see if I have anything else there. I really was planning on getting a lot of sleep after y'all left tonight, well, if I'm being honest. And I can appreciate but, that. Um, yeah. And I pull out, I pull out my KIA. These have been scrubbed clean as far as location. So if you want to throw that on my, my device here, I can help you parse it. The information I, I have yet to go through. I focus on you very intently <laughs> for a moment. And so I, I don't think you understand what it is to be accessing this information. I, I'm in a very tenuous position at the moment and I have very few bargaining chips with which to protect my life. So you'll forgive me if I hang on to the couple that I have a little tightly, but I will get back to you when I can. I think it's at this moment you remember coming across a file about, and it was probably just research, uh, talking about how we continue the thread of consciousness from body to body. Because again, for those of you who don't know, um, these replicants, at least as they are in this form now, are basically genetically engineered human bodies. Everything's biological. There's nothing mechanical in here. So trying to, you know, download memories isn't really something that they could do very easily or implanting these memories isn't easy. So I think you remember accessing a file about uh, how we can make it feel a little bit more real. And there was a, a whole little article or research bit on uh, giving these Nexus models or Vanya the ability to write poetry. Or there's something in there where uh, one of the researchers, uh, N.A., it's listed as N.A., uh, says something like one of the models started citing poetry and we didn't plan for that we didn't put that in there and it's amazing and you know the person goes on to you know write a little bit more about that but i think that memory clicks in right then yeah i, I pause for a second after that little 
intense moment and I just kind of wordlessly drift off over to a terminal and I'm, I'm accessing something and there's a stack of papers next to me and almost, almost surreptitiously, I, I throw a book at what looks like, like, an, like an, old, an old photo album that's been emptied out, which you might assume may have contained previously all of those photos of birds that are now pinned up there and uh, just kind of cover the stack of papers while I work. I think there is something about uh, poetry, maybe? I'd really have to double check and dig into it, but I, I can definitely update you the second that I have something a little more concrete. I'd appreciate it. Um, I am curious, and this is for Nat's sake, um, you said that you were able to recognize that she was on the same server at the same time as you, and likely security um, were able to... Um, well, I imagine she was flagged one way or the other. So I'm curious if she was flagged upon entering the server, or sh- if she stumbled on something specifically that set off a flag, and if you're able to see that. Because it's one thing if she got onto the server and that set off alarm bells, but it's another thing if she found a file and that had some sort of extra level of connectivity to something, some security that caused that to send up a flag. GM, can I assume that's because she didn't have the key that I came into possession of? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, you, if memory serves, you really succeeded on that role, so I was able yeah. to explain to you why it was working for you and not for the intruder that you now know was Natalie. The server itself is almost a honeypot in its design. Any intrusion into it without the correct key, without the correct access point, is most likely going to get you detected if you try and rip any files. And I imagine that she tried to copy them directly, which definitely is another thing that Tyrell does not want people to do. So, uh, she's good. And she might have gotten away with it, but she missed a few pieces. And I didn't know who it was. All I knew was that the intrusion came from the LAPD, and I didn't make any measure to alter or shield the intrusion that I detected because I didn't know who it was. So she was just doomed from the beginning. I mean, she got unlucky, but it was a shell game where there was no ball under any cup to begin with. It was always in the dealer's hand and I just so happened to find that instead. Okay. Yeah, because I was just curious if, um, uh, just with any good case, sometimes there's pieces of information, there's something that helps connect the dots, and I was just wondering if maybe she had stumbled on something, something to give us a little bit more of a lead. I mean, I, I do think that, um, we do need to check out Electric Dreams. A lot of things seem to point there or surrounds there, but, like I said, I feel like we're missing something. I... I'm not sure what I can do about a club. I don't really do so well at the whole, uh, I'm good at not being noticed. I'm not so good at blending in, if that makes sense. But if well, there's anything I can do to help you access or or breach a system, I don't know how much, how connected they're gonna be. It's not gonna be quite like Crack and Tyrell, but. Actually, maybe. Skiff and Selma saw Banya and someone else, is that correct? They had walked into a back area of sorts, and upon trying to get there, you didn't find them, and that's when you found the haiku. Hypothetically, there could be some sort of exit into some other space there. Blueprints would be good, especially originals if possible. Ownership is another. Who owns that space? Because if these replicants are hypothetically using it for whatever purposes. They either need to know who owns it or did own it. Yeah, yeah. um, Sure, I can do some digging on the outside, you know, non-physical, and then see if I find anything. Uh, I don't know what their security is going to be like, but I I can do my best. But 
I, you're not it's asking me to go in there in person, right? No. No. No? I'll do it. Okay. All right, well, I'm always happy to be in someone's ear or, you know, if you can... I mean, Selma's very good at this, so, you know, if she got her boots on the ground, you know, she might be a better suited for that. But if you do need anybody, you know, through an uplink, <coughs> doing whatever it needs to be done, I'm very happy to do that. I can do it remotely. So just a overarching question. What is your dream outcome, Sawyer, of all of this, this information? What do you want to see happen? I want to burn Tyrell to the ground. First and foremost. Because I blame them for... a lot of ills done in the world. And I blame them for taking a lot away from me, personally speaking. So I have quite a score to settle on that one. I'd also like to root out the mole, whoever it is within our department. That's kind of my number one priority right now, is finding a way to bait a trap to find whoever it is that's feeding information to Tyrell. That's a pretty high priority for me. Other than that, rooting out the underground and stopping them from killing innocents and souring the discourse so severely that we've set up a kill on sight order for every replicant on and off world. Uh, but if you want to know what the ideal outcome for me is, it would definitely be me being reinstated as a Blade Runner and set up on a cushy pay packet that lets me go and retire off-world a decade from now and reunite with my father. Is that what you want to hear? Most of it. I just want to be clear about... He said stop. The, uh underground what do you mean by stop what, do, what would you imply stopping means could mean a few things could be just destroying their resource rooting out their agents making sure they stop killing people he didn't say anything about killing them that's what I'm getting at you want to kill the underground or just stop it? Do you want to kill them or do you want to bring them to justice? Where I'm from, it's rude to answer a question with a question. I would not shed a tear at any skin job being aired out and killed if they belong to the underground. Burn them all for all I care. Here, here. Just making sure. Just wanted to hear you say it. As for the mole, we found a surveillance device inside an object in Selma's office. If we were able to get you that physical piece of tech, or I don't even know if you need it, do you think there's a way to trace that, to use that? to find who's getting that broadcast, where that's going. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I mean, I was thinking about this, that the best way to catch someone like this is to do something that they would care about and then trace whatever line of communication they use to inform somebody else about it, right? Okay, all so right. If we, assume that, if we assume that Selma's office is bugged, we assume that everything's gone. Right? Yep. That the entire building is compromised top to bottom. Yep. Okay, all right. Which means so, that... Speaking of a honey trap, as you'd mentioned, we've got a location and an object. So, hypothetically, considering we're looking into what we're looking into and not knowing all the players involved, what could we say in Selma's office? What could we do or say in Selma's office that might cause a reaction that would give you the connection needed to trace back whatever I mean is there something because we were about to start messing with the server from inside of her office before we noticed it and we left but what if we choose to use that what if we do something and see if we can spring our own sort of trap is that possible 
What if we intentionally botch an intrusion into the yeah. server that we were just discussing and yes. seeing who exactly in the LAPD it alerts? Yes. Or even just discussing the subject material. I guarantee you any audio device that hears Project Vanya is going to have a lot of questions sure, immediately afterwards. It, so, Is there something you can do for us or give us that... And I know, Selma, I know you're capable. That is sophisticated enough to look like we didn't mean to be discovered. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. We could definitely... That might not even require technological intervention. I would do it just to be safe, but yeah, we can absolutely trick them that way. I don't necessarily need a physical device in front of me. It might help. I could tamper with one, or we could replace a few of them with our own and try and gather some information that way. We can maybe triangulate where it's coming from inside the precinct, but... Yeah, that's... See, if it is inside the precinct, because for all we know, be this is being routed somewhere remote. else. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, at the very least, we could find out where it's being routed to, because I highly doubt Tyrell would have it go straight back to HQ. They are the kind sure. of... If they're half as paranoid as I am, it's definitely going to be routed somewhere else first. And then that person makes the call to send the information on. So, yeah, we can absolutely do that. Okay. Um, how do you all feel about that? Setting a trap, seeing where that, lo uh, that road leads. I think it's a good idea. It's one of the only ways forward. Yep. We've hit a roadblock. Yeah. I do agree that there's something to electric dreams. And I think that we have two we have two directions right now. I'm not sure if we have any others. I don't want to put anybody else at risk. Nat had to deal with too much. So. I just want to figure out with you guys what our best course of action is. What should we do first and how should we do it? Any opinions? I like the idea of setting a trap. I could do it. So I could do it. There's the um, a couple ways we could go about that. I mean, you're, it's like you're sitting in the middle of a spider's web, hmm. you know, you're making yourself the fly and you're moving to get the attention. I'm not sure how we get you out or if that's possible. I may have an idea, but it does require some risk from me. So again, I hope it comes with some assurances in return. Okay. They are definitely monitoring my access to the LAPD. They know when I'm in the office. They know when I'm not in the office. I mean, they know when anyone's in the office, but they're definitely keeping me earmarked. The problem is, if we find out where it's routed to, how do we respond quickly? You four could be prepared to, you know, drive, take a spinner directly to wherever we detect this site being, if I light the fire inside the LAPD to cause the signal to be sent. And it's not, it's dangerous for me, but I highly doubt anyone would murder me, you know, on the, in the bullpen or on the office floor or anything like that. So. Plus I have Are a few personal to items to collect. I am willing to do that if I can have one assurance from all of you, which is that you will If I was not me, and I was the most paranoid person in the room still, I would assume that I'm the mole. That would be the most compelling set of evidence that you have at the moment in terms of bizarre behavior and the whole situation with the bomb being planted in the, the morgue. I just need some assurance that you're going to back me up if I get pulled in by Holden or anybody else. I do not want to be seen as a rogue operator. I'm, I'm collaborating with you four. You could have somebody there stay behind with you, prepared for that, and the other three in a spinner, ready to go off in whatever direction this might lead. 
I'll do it. I'll do it. Especially Sawyer's inside. Oh, you big for this. And um, if Holden pulls you in for anything, I'll be there to have your back. Okay, that means a lot. I am. I know it's a bit late, but um, uh, I was talking. I was asking PB about it, but I would uh, our conversation, Sawyer and I. When he said uh, I would air out any of them if it came to it or whatever, yep. you wanted to roll inside. I, I wanted on to roll inside yep. on that, and I wasn't sure if that was kosher with other PCs or not. So yep. just want to make sure. So I'll roll it now. Yeah, I have always been one to be okay with PvP or variations of it. So you guys can roll inside on each other all you want. Uh, okay, with that's a three. three. I shall roll. So yes, <laughs> it's going to be a contested roll. So I believe you roll manipulation. Is that correct? How have we been doing this before? Yeah. Or is it the same? Yeah, yeah, manipulation. I think, yeah. I think it's manipulation, yeah. Yep. Which I'm not. Okay, so two successes. So basically what I would suggest for you, uh, Flick, is- You could also push if you want. You can push, first of all. Um, and second of all, what we, we have a couple of ways with that we can do this. We can have S Zeke ask you some questions that you then answer honestly, or you can give Skiff an idea of what he sees or might sense behind the words that you spoke. I'm waiting to see if you'll push it yeah, first before same. I ask any questions. Yeah, same. I'm not, I'm not gonna push. Okay. So okay. All right. I can, uh, then I, I just wanna know if you meant it. If you meant I can what give you, you said. I'm gonna give you two things off that okay. roll, personally. Okay. One is that the stack of papers that I covered, it was definitely meant to be played off as nonchalant, but I was absolutely hiding something in that moment. Okay. I absolutely just covered something up that I didn't want you to see. Okay. And the, the other thing is that when I talked about airing out the replicant underground, that there was genuine hatred and venom, and that there was a real sense of, absolutely I'm committed to killing the replicant underground if it comes to it, 100% okay. truthful on that particular front. Okay. I didn't even know that. Uh, also, before we continue, I have a magic phrase every campaign that I run, and somebody just said it. Uh, so I need everybody to roll for me, uh, and it's going to be an empathy roll. Uh, let me take a look here. Connections, yep. insider manipulation. I will let you choose either manipulation or insight, and I'm sorry, but you don't get to know what it's for. But I'll tell you what the phrase was. Uh, the phrase was, what is your dream? And we're all rolling for Every this single no? one of you needs okay. to roll, and you can choose whether you're rolling insight or manipulation. Okay. Hey, wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to walk away with that, and we'll find out what it was later. Uh, just for the listeners, uh, Selma got zero successes. I got Skiff got one success. Bob got two successes, and Galen got one success. Um, and Sawyer got one. Yeah, as well. the only one that got two is Bob. What is your dream, Bob? Oh, I didn't see her. Sorry. <laughs> oh, is that something I say out here? I mean, you're not saying it in front of everybody That's... else, but I but I am curious as to what your dream is. You don't have to tell me right now if you don't want to, but I think when Skiff asks Sawyer, what's your dream outcome in all of this? I think you think about what yours is. What? Mm, I'm trying to think of the best way to present this. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I think upon Skiff, because uh, Skiff, Skiff said that, right? Skiff yeah, said, Skiff said it. And it was your dream. Um, I, not even thinking, uh, grabbed the ring around my neck. And that's it. For now. Okay. Thank you for letting me interrupt. Please continue. Okay. Um, if we're okay with this plan, at least to move forward, um, 
before, and I'm sorry, I have to be pragmatic. I've got to be practical. Sawyer, I don't know what forces we're going up against, and I don't know how long you or anyone is going to survive this. You have a skill set. We need it. So, the information on electric dreams. Before we move through with this mole trap idea, we do need that first. We need to know who owns the place and what that place has to hide, if anything. Okay. Um, Cell and Skiff have the software I gave them, so encrypted communications easily enough. I can yeah. send that to you. I can call you. I can send it written. Whatever you need. As soon as you get anything, please. All right. I'll keep looking into the drives I have. Um, you want to do that now? Because you could do, do what it. Now? You can do anything now if you want. Like I don't know if you're yeah, holding if you could back look it because up, I would want it down. Yeah. Like you want me to? You see an you urgency can. in yeah. me. I'm Punch just, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I brush myself off a little bit and go, yeah, no, of, of, of course, I can, I can work with people watching me. That's fine. Yeah. And uh, I, I am more than happy to uh, do a cursory look at Electric Dreams. Mm-hmm. I take the address to work with, to start with, yeah. and I see if there's any, anything on record. I'm probably trying to look for public records, and if I can't, yeah. I would go through the LAPD at this stage as uh, okay. stealthily as possible. Yep, okay. Um, go ahead and roll me tech. God damn. Wow. <laughs> That's a four for wow. no okay. Um, yeah. Two tens Holy was rolled. Holy shit. Okay, hold on. Let me pull up some stuff. Okay, what are your Still questions? Well. All right, so... Um, you're, the, um, you're the tech person. <laughs> it rolled so Hacker high, man. Like, Previously, the motto of the place where replicants come to get fucked and fucked up. Woo! Yep, seriously. <laughs> so, I cracked my, my original, <laughs> my, <Yeah. laughs> my, my original questions, uh, the first two was who owns it, if it's a, okay. a person, corporation, mm-hmm. organization, whatever, mm-hmm. and any sort of old, um, old to current blueprints. Things can change, places can change. I'm very curious what the inside of this is supposed to look like, and if something is being hidden. Okay. Keeping in mind, we did have the blackout as well, so a lot of absolutely like, yeah information was wiped. It would had to have been re-uploaded um, or submitted or accessed. Um, is there? But a, also keeping in mind that you rolled a four, which I'm pretty sure is that's there a city the clerk's office with. Uh, paper blueprints by any chance? Would that have been something that would still probably, exist? Probably. Well, I don't even know if it's necessarily that it still exists, but after the blackout, ev- there was a huge cry to go back to analog. Yeah. So it's entirely possible that if Sawyer can't find this information digitally, he can find where you can find the information. Um, okay. Again, that is a four. It's the best role uh, that uh, you can get, I'm pretty sure. And I think, um, you know, I... Advantage, I, you could get a six. That's okay. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but with a regular roll, that's the best that you can do. But unfortunately, if it's n- like literally not accessible, then I have to get creative on how we go about doing that because I do want to. Oh, wanna, absolutely. Yeah. It's um, okay if it doesn't lead anywhere. But I know that like. Mm, is it though? First, because I feel like well, I. But in, in this society, mm-hmm. after everything, and this is just my thought process, but after everything that's happened, there's always going to be uh, blind spots. And there's also going to be. A level of fatigue within the working force the police and everything else like that Mm -hmm. when it's hey can you look this up no i can't because we can't we don't have that anymore there's a point where you're like well yeah you just accept that there's just not going to be things that you can find um but that doesn't mean it's not there well what i'd like to do with the critical success here is say that you do find it but you're not going to find it in the lapd so is it possible that sawyer would have access to I don't know, this reality's version of hacker Reddit or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so it definitely is on a forum or yeah. five. Okay. Um, yeah. Then this is where you will find the information. But when you go to the LAPD, there's nothing on this this place. So I think that's probably that's the first thing you try and you're like, yeah, well, okay, we're rebuilding the information. And it's not like Electric Dreams has been on a, a list of, you know, you guys have been prioritizing what to put into the LAPD database. And this just hasn't been 
uh, on the list um, as a priority yet. Um, Talus yeah. Agni is the proprietor of the uh, Electric Dreams. What was your next question? Um, honestly, that is, sorry, that is mostly it. Um, I think that if you are pulling up the other information that I am looking at, my partners, um, sort of gesturing like, what are, is there something we're missing? Is there something else that we can look up on this? Is there anything that you guys can think of? I would definitely be looking for if Electric Dreams is hooked up to anything, you know, if there is a point of remote access to Electric Dreams itself, or if it just doesn't even have that, you know, not every building is is linked to other things, so it it, it might not be, and that might be telling in and of itself. Is like, oh, it's, that's you know, a control. really oh, fucking grid, good it? question. God yeah, damn. Um, yes, I'll give you that. And in fact, I think that's how you're getting this information, because somebody mm. somewhere went, there's a lot of power draw coming from this this thing, and there's an uplink maybe, I think. Uh, and some people dug into it and were like, yeah, there are at least four uplink access points coming from somewhere in Electric Dreams. But when people go to it, they don't, there isn't any. So I think you probably found it in some, hey, where's a safe, you know, relatively underground uplink place? And somebody went, oh yeah, I see there's some access points here uh, and they're secure. And then somebody went to the club and went, yeah, I went into the club and there doesn't appear to be anything and I wasn't sure shit wasn't going to ask. And then they left. So yeah, there's absolutely some uplink uh, spots uh, where you could plug in to what is left of our version of the web. Um, what district uh, was Electric Dreams in? Or what sector? <laughs> so that was such a good question. Sorry, I'm still not over that. Um, let me pull that up. It's, I know it's on the 52nd floor, but I don't know if we decided what sector it was in. I don't know uh, if we ever said. I don't see it think. here. This was a little more, I don't know if the word is upscale, right? But this had like, yes, he had style and panache and everything else like upscale that. Upscale for, sure. for this yeah. area. Cause it's, it's still, you know, oh wait, this isn't 52 floors up. This was 30 some odd floors up, correct? Yes. I have no fucking. Sorry, idea. I'm. I'm just because <laughs> you go floor is based on like wealth and stuff in here, and Electric Dreams was like good. Oh wait, or was it the Uplink Cafe that was thirty? I cannot remember, so I'm not gonna say because I don't want to fuck up my own lore. But it's somewhere up there where it's like it's a bit wealthier. You're certainly not gonna see people that are walking on the street going in there. However, you may see somebody like Gaff one of your coworkers go there. Gaff is kind of like, he's always very well dressed and you know, like it might be a place that you might see him at if he was gonna go so treat somebody maybe somewhere. maybe Sector 9? Yeah. Sector um, 9 has um, uh, a fashion, fashion district. district in financial it. Grand Central Market, LA Central Library and Retirement Row. Yeah, it has a few um, it doesn't seem as much of a business district necessarily, so I'm wondering if yep. it's more of an entertainment. Sounds good to me. I think I may have made it Sector 5 now that I'm staring at the map, but we can oh, go with Sector no, 9. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Sector 5 is, is an where interesting you guys spot. Are. Yeah. I mean, they're, they, I'm they, pretty they, sure it's in Sector 5. Sector well, let's 5 go with that. would be very dangerous for Electric but, Dreams. Yeah. But potentially clever if they're if they're close enough. Um, so maybe Southern Sector Five. <laughs> so just to clarify, they have mm -hmm. uplinks. Are they running in a sense that I could remotely access them, or are you they could not? You can certainly connection? try. They are connected. I can certainly try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can always try. Okay. Um, keep in mind, everything comes at a cost here. So like, you can certainly try, but there is still risk <laughs> involved. She's been dying to say that. She's been dying oh, to say Oh, I say that it. all the time, You can try. Uh, yeah, um, uh-huh, uh-huh. So I would definitely, I definitely notify the others, you know, this thing has a, definitely has uplink terminals. Have you been there? Yeah. Yeah. I'm 
assuming they don't offer that as a service because it no they like, do not no. they are a nightclub they do have terminals that i could in theory access but i don't particularly like stumbling blind on intrusions where i don't know what the level of security is so i'm very happy to do that at some stage or assist selma in doing that but Ideally, we have a somewhat better idea of what we're looking for before we try that, because I hate going in without a plan. So if we can figure something else out, then we can explore that down the line. All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, I know I understand the not wanting to go in blind thing, but how, I mean, how bad could it be? You broke into Tyrell. I broke into Tyrell with about five weeks of pre-planning and a backdoor key that I stole from one of their chief designers. Okay. I committed, I committed corporate espionage while on the clock to be able to do what, that. This is- What, what would I'm, you need I'm to do your job up. better to, to, to more facilitate your, the breaking in of this place? The safest option in my mind would be to have some burner equipment and to do so remotely, but closer somewhere where it doesn't, somewhere where I, I don't have to be connecting from halfway across the city would be, would be better probably. And that way the site is burned once we've used it. So if something horrible does happen, then it doesn't come back down on a place that I'm using regularly or any of got us the, are using regularly. Got the burner equipment handled. I okay. I well, that earlier. If you find me a place near Electric Dreams, I'm happy to facilitate or remotely guide if uh, an intrusion into electric dreams systems, which I'm very curious what they look like. The power draw I'm seeing here is, they have some serious equipment running in this place. I'm gonna this, give uh... you one other thing with that four oh. tech roll. Um, when you say there's a serious power draw and there's serious equipment, I think you're probably now doing your version of Google Foo while you're talking, because Sawyer's very, very <laughs> yeah. good at this. Uh, so I think you're looking up uh, Talus Agni is the proprietor, uh, and you're getting some information on when uh, he became the proprietor. Uh, and as you're looking through some of this information, I hopefully think hopefully newspaper articles like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. anything like There's, that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You're coming across info um, where uh, you see. I think it's implied that there's a, a serious investor. That's more money than Agni would probably have. When you look up, um, when you look up Agni, I think it's like, first of all, you see, I can actually, I'll give you guys a photo here in a second. Um, but it doesn't seem like if you're going through financials, I'm assuming with that tech four, I'm just giving you as much information as yeah. I can, that you're looking up their financial information, all sorts of stuff. Uh, they came into a huge sum of money in order to run the bar and they are being paid monthly to run this bar. And I'm taking a guess that the the level of power draw I'm looking at and like the cost I imagine it would be to run this place could not really justify the it's gotta income be corporate. of a bar. Yeah, it's gotta be corporate yeah, and okay. it's more. Yeah, so this, it's place so is more. this place is operating at a loss basically. Yes. And, mm -hmm. Which okay. isn't necessarily strange in these times. No, no that's um, true. But um, yeah, I could, so we've got bait the trap and we've got breach electric dreams. Those are both things I can absolutely help with. And, um, well, you already <laughs> know my asking price and I'm, I'm hoping that wasn't, that's not too much for you. Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Um, okay. Is there what anything else on? you need me to look at or think about? And did you want it to do anything tonight? Did you, because I've got the drive for you ready to go. And I gesture to what looks like very heavy duty looking car carry cases. They look like they've been, just, I've got two of them and, and they both look like they're heavily shielded against all sorts of interference. And so you have to assume it carries some kind of very important tech inside the case. All right. Um. As as much as I would like you to look for more information about Sam or whatever the hell is going on, it almost feels like a footnote, at least for now. 
I think we have two directions to go right now. Um, I'll I'll cast a wide net for some of that stuff, and if anything pops up, I'll dig. But I'll I'll focus more on the prep for what we're talking about already. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, so we just need to figure out what we're doing and when, and who's going to be where. So. You said we need to find a place near Electric Dreams that will give you access. I'm sure we can do a little scouting and find that out. I can out. do that. There you go. We need to have you and Selma at some point set up to be inside of the LAPD in order yeah. to potentially, I'm assuming from your office, Selma, to yeah. trigger a trap. I am not comfortable just you two being there. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if someone will be there. Even if you do find information is going from the LAPD outward, we don't know who is inside the LAPD and may be a threat against you. So I'm going to suggest there should be two at the station, which I will volunteer unless anyone has any sort of argument against. And then Skiff and Galen, when that happens... You two be in a spinner, ready to go. Does this sound okay, or am I missing anything? I think that works for me. Gets us, uh, started, for sure. That might be good in the sense that there's... If the mole is a physical person in the LAPD, then at least there's one extra set of hands to deal with him in that case. I just... I don't know how burned you're going to be, Sawyer, after this happens, so... I am already about as burned as you can be. Uh, and you're uh, still alive. You're not as burned as you can be. I'm alive because I'm three times more paranoid than the person standing next to you. Still. I think if we try and set off this, whatever it's going to be, for a mole and see what we can find. Um, and then from there... The very next step is Electric Dreams. Unless something else comes up, but that just seems logical. Okay. Does anyone else have... uh, Because I I don't want to be overstepping here. We're partners. (laughs) And I know I I have my own skin in this right now. I've just been processing here. I I think we should do this as, as, as closely as a squad as we can. Um, I have a feeling things are not just getting dangerous. I think it's, uh, I think we're at a critical juncture and we need to be very careful. So Bob, I like that plan. So out of curiosity, um, Sawyer, you're, you're still on the, in good standing with the LAPD, yeah? I'm kind of like the office cryptid. So. So, I was just wondering why you couldn't procure a, a sidearm for yourself. I. I'm a Blade Runner washout. Yeah. And I failed my probationary trial. So, I'm an analyst. I am. Okay. I carry a subcompact and I have access to a detective spinner, but I. It would be strange for me to requisition anything physical when most of my job involves, you know, sequencing data, uploading archives, interfacing with Tyrell. Everything I do is on a technical aspect. I'm not a field agent officially until I write out whatever this, uh, I don't know, punishment that I'm on currently that the brass put me on. I uh, I reach for my sidearm and I pull it out and I hand it to him. But for- whoa, <laughs> no, I hand it to him. But first, okay, I, all right. <laughs> this is my. Got it. I don't I don't use a a police issue. This is just a three fifty seven that I've, I own. It's mine, so I can requisition one without bringing up any suspicious suspicions. I I take. Don't it worry, it doesn't have any sentimental value. Okay, so you don't mind if I lose it? I'd rather you didn't. Don't lose it. Yeah, I'm not. Go- I'm not going to lose it. Okay, yeah, it's just. No, it's just simple pull. <laughs> uh, you know, load it up, pull the trigger. No bells or whistles. But yeah, 
Okay. Well, I have a needs. subcompact that was issued to me for personal defense, but yeah, this will be this will be a better the, deterrent. It's so right. you're on the slight side. Uh, uh, I'm just on, wondering, uh, so- like, how huge this gun looks. <laughs> Sawyer's Sawyer's strength is D. His force is D. His hand to hand is D, and his stamina is D. If that helps paint a picture at all, because that is pretty much exactly what I had in my head. It's yeah. like <laughs> it's, it's like a hand hobbit cannon. holding a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A hand cannon. I mean, he's he's, he's like. He's five. He's five seven. You know, he's he's not he's not tiny, but he's he is rail thin. He's a very he's a very uh, malnourished Gaunt, looking individual. Yeah. Gaunt. Thank you. <laughs> Living on whatever this version of hot pockets uh, yeah. are in Blade Pretty Runner. Pretty much. Yeah. Living off coffee and spite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, this my my gun is not like. It's not like a long barrel, like 357. It's like, you know, like it's a, it's a, it, it, what police used to be issued, like way back at like in the 60s and shit. It's just like, like, like a snub, yeah. a snub nose. Sort yeah, of a snub revolver. nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, okay. it's not right. huge. I think 357, like magnums get like a, a bad rap. They're not that big. A 44 is what Dirty Harry had. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, does anyone have any questions for me? Cause I got, Two for everybody here, which I hope is okay. Um, no, I have I have some questions about other other things, but no. I saw your spinner crash shortly after our last meeting. I know we didn't meet in person or nothing, but I was fairly convinced no one was surviving that. It's just surprising to see everybody standing upright in this room right now. A few scrapes and bruises. Um, Aelin had a food poisoning, I guess. And uh, had control of the wheel when it hit him and just sort of lost control for a bit. But, um, yeah, no, we're fine. Safe. Having issues? What 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 happened? It was we stopped food at a poisoning. Place. Yeah, food poisoning. Yeah, we had uh, stopped at a place and ate before we uh, came to rendezvous with you, um, and uh, just sort of hit them at a bad time. All right. Uh, I, I I'm glad you're both alive. I did check the scanner afterwards, but I, I didn't hear any. KIA reports, but I didn't hear anything otherwise, so. Thank you. I just wanted to address that. I've survived a spinner crash, point of fact, so I know it's possible. I was just surprised. Your other question? Where were you all during the blackout? Do you remember? Hmm. That's a good question. It's not that important. I was just curious. It's a thing I've been thinking about a lot lately. No, no. I thought How many years ago did that happen, by the way? Yeah. One year. Yeah, one year. It's yeah. been a little. It's been like, around. Oh, okay. It's like 16 okay. months. Yeah, 16 months. Oh, wow. months. Okay. 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 Not long. I think I was like getting a coffee or something, and the lights went out, and. We were real confused. Didn't get my coffee. Do we know what time of day it was? I believe it was in the middle of the afternoon. Okay. Because it's official lore. I don't want to fuck it up, but I'm pretty sure I remember it. I can, with okay. 98% sure it's the middle of the afternoon, like two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I was at a sushi bar waiting for somebody. Funny enough, I... <laughs> I was getting blackout in the bla- during when the blackout happened. I was I look working at the case. What case were you working? <sighs> it 
Does it matter? I guess not. But I, I look at Skiff very pointedly and say, you seem to wonder if I... You want to know if I hate replicants and want to see them dead? I was in the air when the blackout hit. That's why I'm talking about spinner crashes. I was up real high. And I you lost see a lot more than my ears. When you say that, like I flinch pretty hard. I lost a lot more than my hearing up there. So I've got a big score to settle with the Replicant Underground. So really, you do not have to doubt my allegiances on that one. It's not that I don't believe you or anything of that nature. Being paranoid, you understand. Game recognized game. Paranoid people live a whole lot longer in this business. All right. What time is it? Is it almost midnight? That sounds about right. Or maybe it's closer uh. to one, actually, because it was 11 when you guys left Bills. So I'd yeah, say it's probably 1.30, right? you say... Yeah, is it almost midnight? And then you look and go, oh, it's midnight 30. It's almost 30 minutes to one, one in the morning. Hmm. I don't know about you all, but I'm planning on just getting some noodles and going to bed. Well, I've got one last question for you then, and it's just a practical one. Nothing too deep, but do you want to take this drive, the copy of the Vanya files? If you're offering, I'll take it. Well, I think more than I should hold on to it. I just want you to understand that they have killed and will kill for less critical information than this. So whatever you choose to do with it from here on, wherever you choose to leave it, however you choose to store it, just know that this thing's an albatross. So if you'd rather I hold on to it for now until you have a use for it, that's also fine. But I do have two of these cases, and I'm willing to give you one of them. This thing is triple reinforced, designed to, as far as I can tell, it might survive another EMP. So uh, nothing's frying that. As long as you can keep the case in your hands, it should keep the data safe. Is this one of those things that I can't or shouldn't look into? Once I hand you the information, it is yours to look at. What I'm giving you is a copy that I've personally transcribed. So anything that's written in there, it's gone through my head and out into the keys. There's no traces. There shouldn't be anything there. You're not accessing any servers. It's it's just a, an offline I see. digital copy. So if you want to take it, then you can. I just, I caution Selma. you to think about where you're going to keep it. Selma. Yeah. I'm going to ask you for a favor. Yeah. Would you please take it for now? Because I really need sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And if I, I have it, I will. I ask. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I can, I can hold on to it. Thanks. You need to put that someplace that nobody would find it. And go I was thinking of leaving it in the street, before. Galen. She frequently leaves things in the street. I don't know if you knew that about her. It's kind of a condition. It's tough. I have to walk around behind her with a little scoop. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll be sure to put it in in something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Are you still taking your pills for that, Selma? By the way. <laughs> Here and there. You know, some she, days I forget, she leaves so her pills I have to too. be reminded. Yeah. Gotta yeah. be reminded yeah. to put things away properly in the proper spot. Well, I, I visibly for, turn off my hearing aid. <laughs> for 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 Galen's part, you know, um, what happened with your badge? It's just, I think he's just being extra. You know, careful. he has a point with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair ooh, enough. Ooh, that's tough. Fair that's enough. a tough one. I, I set this I say nothing, very, by the way. Like, I just look <laughs> deadpan the whole time. I set this very heavy case on 
on a, a bench in front of Selma, and I snap open the locks and open it up, and okay. sitting inside, kind of, I think almost comically small compared to <laughs> the level of security surrounding it, is uh, a single drive just sitting there inside a case looking like it's designed to hold like it looks like a nuclear football but it's just holding one drive basically I only got two of these so uh don't lose it I, I, I just I can't take my eyes off it I just stare at it yeah I'm I'm also pretty entranced and sort of like wow I, I didn't expect it to be this uh compact Hmm. Kano Nakayama has some serious technological investments in his personal. I'll say. Yes. Um, that's all from me. So, I'll be here if you need me. We will. And Soon. Thank you. Um, me personally, I'm extending whatever you would need from me also. That goes both ways. You've helped us out tremendously today, so... I am asking you for a lot, so uh, we'll call it even once we figure out this mole situation. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, don't I get think... don't get yourself killed, please. It's not going to happen. Same goes for you. I right. think after some sleep tomorrow, we can convene and then figure it out when we should do this. Middle of the day, middle of the night. I don't know what's best, but we'll figure it out. Oh, and I, I just remember I pull out my, uh, a, uh, a, 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 the spare cylinder for the 357 with a reload in it. Just a quick reload. Uh, it only has six shots, so here's six more. Oh, thank you. I, I hope I don't even need one bullet, but we'll see. You always hope that. I think every cop hopes that. Yeah. All right, I'm I'm headed home. Yeah. I start walking towards the door. Um, when are we meeting tomorrow? I don't know, five, six. Maybe. I'm sorry, PM. Yeah, I mean that's probably when I'll be waking okay. up. <laughs> no, you almost, you almost. Oh, gave me no, a heart no, no, I'm not waking up in the morning. No. Yeah. Four <laughs> hours, you mean? Let's catch up in the uh, around the evening shift, maybe a little beforehand. Yeah. All right. And then we can go. You got to make sure that you're, and I'm, uh, probably just lightly gesture, uh, to your stomach. Got to make sure we give you time to heal. Yeah. I've been trying to take it easy. <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Oh, and Bob. Yeah. Good one. And I'm out. All right, I guess that's our cue too, maybe. Yeah. Uh. Um. <sighs> Galen, can you drop me off at the uh, memorial? Sure. Thanks. Sawyer, thanks again for... for all the help. I'm a message away. Thank you for picking up when I called you. I genuinely do not know who else I would have turned to if you hadn't. Take it easy. Yeah, you too. And I'll get up, kind of stretch a little bit. <sighs> Prepare to go towards the door. Oh, we did get here in one car. Yeah, That's you right. did all go in one vehicle. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to assume that either you... I'm going to assume that you're not going to all call a cab from this secret location. So I was just letting the RP go out that Skiff's probably waiting in the car for you. Like, he probably gets out there and goes, oh, for fuck's sake, like, 
we all went in the same spinner, so you'll go out and see him probably smoking a cigarette. No, 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 no. Skiff no, knows a, nice, a good. He knows a good noodle spot around here. Oh, okay, okay. So then Skiff went to just go get noodles, and yep. uh, he's not at the vehicle. Yeah, and I would assume uh, Galen would know exactly which one I would, uh, you know, being partners for as long as we have, I would have opened yeah. up a little bit, so. Yeah, so then uh, Selma, the only question I have is, are you riding with them or are you going to wander off and walk for a bit or are they going to? No, I would probably ride, yeah. ride with them. So okay. I, I'm just, you know, waiting by the door. I'm kind of getting my stuff together, get my shoes on, everything. I don't know if we took off our shoes or nor not, but I'd Probably be not. fiddling with something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anybody do anything else before leaving Sawyer's apor- apartment or not apartment um, station workstation? <laughs> Safe house. Safe house. Yeah. yeah. Well, rat hole. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say. Safe house it. is a bit of a strong uh, word, <laughs> but yeah, but rat hole. It it sounds rat like hole is newspaper word, fucking. Yeah. You know, shoved into the corners. <laughs> to, yeah, I mean, it's. Um, I think that I'll probably uh, just. Um, I, I I'll give Sawyer a look for sure. I don't know if you're gonna pick up on what it is, but That's you cool. would have seen me react earlier when you said the the car thing. So I'm just gonna look at you and give you a slow nod, and then thank you. And I just nod back. All right, stay safe. Um, I'll probably be the last one to leave. Hey. Um, as I'm uh, walking out the door, I'll uh, turn around towards you, Sawyer, and I and I say, um, Maybe when you get to know me better. Of course. Let's hope we both live that long. And I think we're going to go to one final scene for the day. As I sit across from this tower that seems to just extend into the sky and doesn't stop, layers of neon, names and faces and voices, videos underneath it, if you walk into the little holographic projections there's papers people's faces things as simple as just a name written down stapled or glued or however people could I'm sitting on the step that I always sit on I'm not looking at the tower. I'm looking through it. I have this reoccurring dream. But it's a waking one. Sitting at the sushi bar. And I know she's uh, maybe 10 minutes out. She just got off work. 
a little bit early. We don't have any big plans for the day. But in this dream, she makes it to me. She walks up to the sushi bar. She sits down with that smile. She squeezes my shoulder the way she always does. Always did. And I have a smile on my face. Something that I am not used to anymore. The worst thing about dreams is that they're not real. Memories are supposed to be real. I miss her. And I'm going to keep having this dream. And I hope in a way I shouldn't hope that if there's a way to have her back again even if it goes against what I feel I should believe I take it and I hate myself for it so I'm just going to continue dreaming